lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with the raspy Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing okay. Yeah. Um, sorry about the uh, the inconsistent schedule over the last few weeks. Yeah, I've 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 been out like just. Yeah, I should have recorded over the weekend. I was just busy. Yeah. Um, I, between uh, you not being around and me working a bunch of extra hours, I just yeah. it just didn't work out. Life gets in the way, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I've got a collection of clips. Yeah. I, I've got like, okay, so you know the the we're we're gonna have like four clips today, but yeah. there are really two clips yeah. that I split that into four split clips up. Yeah. because they were too long. Yeah. Um, I've got like six other, you know, <laughs> clips, clips that, that can that be need to, split up. That, that need to be addressed. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I, don't know, I don't know when we're going to do it. We might just drop the, um, the uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, immigration thing. Because that's kind of over, yeah. right? Um, and we we, t- we spent a whole, epi- whole episode or pretty close. We talked a good bit on one of the episodes recently. But I, I really wanted to play Maxine Waters' um, stupid thing right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway um there's a whole lot of actually you know i'm gonna mention that part because this is kind of a running theme between last episode and this episode yeah. um is uh, assumption of powers that that they don't have yeah um so there was something she said something in the clip now i might have to actually pull it and play it in, in here. <laughs> might as well just like a do it and address it yeah it's it's just like a short little part of the clip we can ignore all the other stupid stuff so let's just play this one little bit all right he is the one that does not follow the constitution and would not allow those seeking refuge to be able to petition to get into the country so yeah um she She's of course referring to Donald Trump there. Uh, the, he's the one that doesn't follow the Constitution, Constitution yeah, because yeah. um, sh- she's still not over that. But uh, the the thing is that the Constitution doesn't have anything in it about refugees or um, asylum or anything of the sort. There's yeah. nothing in the Constitution about that. The only thing the Constitution says gives a power to the federal government to do related to immigration at all is uh, to make uniform laws of naturalization. Really? That's it? That's it. (laughs) It it doesn't even allow them to control immigration. Just make uniform laws of naturalization. The states are responsible for their own immigration issues. Um, And, and of course, uniform laws of naturalization. That makes sense. Yeah. Right? Like, you don't want all of the states having their own rules for how you become a citizen of these United States. Yeah. That would be kind (laughs) of odd. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Especially since since once you are, you can move from state to state without any Yeah, because you can go anywhere you want. You just go to the state with the easiest requirements and then... And then go wherever it is that you really want. To go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, and it fits in with this because there's just a whole lot of. I mean, I suppose this is a, a an issue where they're um, like, if you repeat something enough, if you give people the impression that the federal government controls immigration, has the power to control immigration, that people start to believe it. Yeah. Um, well, and and like the education system comes into this too, oh, yeah. because like a lot of the stuff just isn't being taught in school anymore. No. Um, so, I mean, where do you expect people to get to know the difference? Like, yeah. you know, the media says one thing over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. You never learned it in school. Yeah. Like, you know, y- yeah, you're going to go find it on your own. Like we did, but like, <laughs> yeah, you know. constitution on my, on my phone. Um, yeah, people, interested people will, but the, mm-hmm. the average person's not doing that. I used to have the Declaration of Independence too, but like for some reason that text is not yeah. compatible with my new I, version yeah, of I got, I had that happen. I tried OS. to open it recently actually for one of the podcasts <laughs> I was going to read up on some stuff and I was like, how is, how do I need to update this? Like, <laughs> yeah. And then you just got to download it again from somewhere else apparently. Weird. Um, yeah, and, or you just look it up because well, that's internet what I did. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's like, well, it's not like I can't go find it. Yeah, <laughs> this I mean, was just convenient. And there's some weird things too. Like, I was talking to my mom the other day, and I know that she must have known this at some point. But <laughs> I, you know, we I grew up in a in an FBI family, um, so certainly the federal government pushes the idea of federal supremacy. Yeah. Um, and I, I guess that just became ingrained in some way. But uh, she said something to me like. Um, did I know that there was an amendment that um, that specifically 
uh, gave powers to the states. And I was like, yeah, you're talking about the Tenth Amendment. It says um, any powers that aren't explicitly granted to the federal government or aren't explicitly denied to the states rest in the states and the people. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, you know, that's been long since forgotten though. Yeah. Well, they and I was a, like, yeah, you know, we interviewed, uh, uh the director of the 10th amendment center. Mike say, they have a whole center. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that's an interview worth listening to. And uh, actually go back and look that one up because we talked to him right at the beginning of this COVID stuff. Yeah. And we were talking about the like predictions about what COVID would be used to do. Yeah. And, um, I'm going to go back and listen to it myself cause I'm yeah. kind of curious. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, you know, I don't know how much of it was in the, I don't know. Podcast. I don't know how much was in the podcast cause we talked to him a good bit, like off, yeah, off mic or whatever. So mm-hmm. I don't know how much was in the podcast, but I remember discussing that stuff with him. Yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's definitely some stuff in the podcast and I, like, I hope that all the, all of the stuff that we talked about ended up in the podcast one way or another because yeah. we look like prophets. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. Kinda laughs> I'm pretty sure the way the, I remember it, the, yeah. it might be, you know. But, uh, you know, there's just a a lot of this kind of thing going around where, um, like I was talking about on the last podcast, there's a a complete ignorance. All right. So here's another part of it, though, that I think is important. Um, And you get it from both sides, the the right and the left, um, is that I think that that these people don't really understand what freedom is. Yeah. Well, I, they don't understand liberty. They don't, you know, and they, they can talk about free markets or whatever it is, but what they're talking about when they talk about free markets isn't the same thing as what we're talking about. No, um and that's that really is a problem like I mean, so you do have the libertarian party in this country which is a third minor minor party or whatever, mm-hmm. but neither of the two big parties are interested in liberty in in much of any fashion. Mm-hmm. Like I mean, they, maybe in one section but then they're so authoritarian on the other side. Mm-hmm. There's uh, there there is no big freedom party in this country. Yeah, uh, I mean, there's just not. Neither neither side stands for freedom. Maybe in one section, but then in the other, they don't. Yeah. You know, um, and that's a problem. We're, that's something that. And I I do believe this country. At least a lot of people. There's a lot of people in this country that are perfectly happy with authoritarianism. Like, I mean, we've yeah. seen that, unfortunately. But um, I do think there's a lot, a large part of the country that's hungry for something like that. Mm-hmm. But they're just afraid to to go that route because they're you so... Mean hungry for something like for, what we're on. Yeah, freedom. We, uh, like like real freedom. Um, but they're afraid to vote for it in the, in the form of the Libertarian Party because they don't want the other side to win. And yeah. it's something we've talked about a lot on this podcast, but, but it's true. Like, I mean, each side's so afraid of the other side that mm-hmm. because it's the biggest election election of our lives yeah every time every time like yeah, yeah. most so. important election ever yeah um well yeah. and in some ways every election is kind of the most important election ever but well it is but but it's only because the government's so big mm-hmm. if you had if you had a smaller government the elections wouldn't be as important because one mm-hmm. side wouldn't rule over the other side mm-hmm. you know well um another thing to shift a little bit. Yeah. Um, another thing that the constitution guarantees, uh, and requires of the States is that they have a Republican form of government. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, right after, uh, I was talking about all that stuff a couple of weeks ago about, you know, these guys using this to claim power to, um, you know, use the coercive power of government to get their way and, and so forth. And, um, really not understanding, um, not really caring about you. Yeah. Right. Uh, then I heard this clip from the new governor of New York, um, Kathy Hochul. And, well, I, the <laughs> we're, only in, thing to we're do, in for a doozy. <laughs> yeah. The only thing to do is to listen to this. Yeah. And we'll be nation leading with our mandate which strikes at midnight tonight when everyone is expected in a hospital in the state of New York or a health care facility to have been vaccinated. I will be signing an executive order to give me the emergency powers necessary to address the shortages where they occur. And that's going to allow me to deploy the National Guard who are medically trained, deploy people uh, who've been retired who may have had a licensed lapse, bring in people from elsewhere. Okay. There's, <laughs> what do there's you, where yeah, do you even start? I know. Like, there's so many things. I mean, hopefully 
everybody listening to this podcast, the part where she says, I'm signing an executive order to give myself the power. <laughs> should have stood out to you as something that doesn't seem to be a part of a Republican or a, a Democrat or a democracy. Yeah. Like a Republican I mean, form of government or a democracy. Yeah. Um, like, at least not a Western style one. Not, yeah. Not, not like what we have over here. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, crazy. And, and there's so many other parts of that too. Like she's proud of being nation leading of requiring vaccines of all these people that work in private businesses, although actually like a whole lot of the healthcare system in, in New York state is, um, at least publicly subsidized, oh, yeah. but, but still, um, <laughs> that's not something I don't think to be proud of. I am the first in the nation to force all of my citizens <laughs> to get an experimental <laughs> medical procedure. Yeah. That's, that's what you, I mean, <laughs> that's you yeah. run on that in the next election. <laughs> yeah. You know? Right. Um, and then Man. of course the executive power she's signing or the executive order that she's signing to give herself the power to do what is to, um, address the staffing shortages. Yeah. Now take this one apart too, right? <laughs> All right. There's staffing shortages because of the mandate. Yeah. At least partially. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and of course at the beginning of this, they were laying people off and like, Oh yeah. But anyway, um, so, the other thing is that she's using the power to address the shortages, uh, bringing in other people, activating the National Guard, conscripting, I guess, people who have retired. I don't know if she I means that, but that's what it sounded I like. I swear that's what it sounded like. I mean, that was the impression I've got. I've listened to the clip a couple of times now. Yeah. That was the impression I got. So slavery reintroduced <laughs> in the United States in New York City. Yeah. Um, but the, the idea of the executive... Um, Move, handling employment for a particular industry for the state. Yeah. That is, that is socialism through and through. Yeah. yeah. You, you can't call it like it is. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> this is, this is the worst kind of central planning of an economy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but the, the main thing that should stand out to everybody is the, I'm, I signed an executive order to give myself the power. <laughs> to give myself the power. I just can't even imagine. That should that. not be possible in well, any kind of representative government. No, it, and and it's not. And it it's but you're seeing this more and more where politicians have always made big power grabs. That's mm -hmm. always been a thing. Yeah. But now it's just like completely open out there. Like it's like they're not even trying to hide the power grab. Yeah. Like, I mean, with statements like that, how could you? <laughs> like, well, you know, and that's not even the end of it. I, I was, uh, I, I'm almost glad that I didn't get a podcast up when I'd planned because then, uh, if I had, I would have missed this one. Uh oh. Uh, is the administration going to sue uh, Texas over the uh, opposing the order for the vaccine mandates? And is there a risk that uh, kind of uh, the OSHA efforts? essentially get tied up in litigation rather than having the immediate effect? Well, Josh, these requirements are promulgated by federal law. So when the president announced um, his vaccine uh, mandates for businesses that, of course, we're waiting on OSHA regulations for as a next step, um, that was pursuant to federal law and the implementation of federal law because it's an executive order. So our intention is to implement and continue to work to implement these requirements across the country, including in the states where there are attempts to oppose them. I will say, since you gave me the opportunity, um, Governor Abbott's executive order uh, banning mandates, and I would also note announcement by Governor DeSantis this morning, essentially banning the implementation of mandates, a uh, fit of familiar pattern uh, that we've seen of putting politics ahead of public health. Okay, so the same thing's going on at the federal level. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know that executive orders are federal law? That's what she said. Yeah, that's what she said. So why have a legislature? Yeah, yeah. Just do whatever, <clears throat> do whatever you want. We could save the American people an awful lot of money by not having a legislature. Yeah, just just let whoever wins the, the election make the decisions. Yeah, I, I, I mean, mean that's basically where we're at. Like, I mean, the, the Congress is incapable of doing about anything and, and which is <laughs> well, fine, which is fine with me. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, since the Congress doesn't do anything now, now the executive does. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, and this isn't, I mean, this is kind of really blatant, but I mean, Trump did the same thing. So mm -hmm. did Obama. Like, I mean, it goes back and back and back, but it steadily gets more and more flagrant 
every every new president. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's having issues with this uh, infrastructure bill, right? Yeah. Why doesn't he just make it an executive order? Yeah. I mean, you have they have to know. I mean, yeah. they know, right, that this yeah. isn't actually federal law. Yeah. Um, but but the, I, I think that's very intentional that she says that, though, mm-hmm. because that's that's planting the seed out there that, you know, executive mm-hmm. orders are law. Yeah. You know? Well, and there's there's two things that go back to, to the last episode um, that I did alone. Um, one is I checked again today. Yeah. There is still no executive order yeah. about this. There's no executive order. It was so an he basically just made an announcement. Yeah, it's a and press then, release. And all of these businesses are just reacting to the announcement. Yes. And not to anything that he's actually put on paper. That's, ins- that's crazy. Yeah. And then again... OSHA does not have the power to legislate. No. So OSHA cannot make new laws yeah. that businesses are required to, to, to submit follow. to. Yeah. yeah. Um, Especially they ones, do. They have been for a while, but I, yeah. you know, this is a, them making laws. This might be, again, like I said, this might be a step too far. This might be them overplaying their hand. Yeah. OSHA making laws about what kind of safety requirements to have in particular industries and so forth. Yeah. That's something that that a lot of people will get behind, yeah. Um, because it's a requirement of the business. Like the yeah. business must provide these things. It's attacking the capitalists. Well, and and and, and um, safety is important. Like I'm not is. for like government mandated safety requirements mm-hmm. because that's not what I believe. But safety is important, and it I is. can see why people would get behind. Well, we need somebody out there saying you can't do this and you can't do that. Right. Um, but just like what you're saying, this is this is a step beyond that. This is beyond mm-hmm. safety. Like this, yeah. this has nothing to do with safety. Yeah. This has has everything to do with power and control. Well, and, and it's and not people, a requirement of the business itself. That. It's a requirement of the people that work there. That's um, true too. And there is a big difference between requiring particular um, safety standards uh, or whatever, and requiring people to get a vaccination to work. Yeah. That, yeah, and especially with at least down south down here, mm-hmm. as many people that don't want it. Yeah. Because I'm telling you, like I talk to people constantly that are up in arms over this deal. Yeah. Um, because because it's already starting. Like I, I've already seen quite a few businesses that are mm-hmm. starting to send out, you know, questionnaires and starting to put the feelers out there. Yeah. And And I don't honestly blame the companies <laughs> because the companies are being pressed by the government. Yeah. Like whether or not there's a, and the actual, government can shut down those companies like in, that. in a blink of an eye. The, yeah. That's the one th- that the one entity as a business you don't want to mess with is the federal government or any government mm-hmm. for that matter, because they can, they can end you immediately. Including OSHA. Yeah. Oh, and OSHA's <laughs> the worst. Like, yeah. I mean, they can, they can end you uh, in a heartbeat, you know, <laughs> but wait, there's less. She goes on. Oh God. Bottom line is we're going to continue to implement the law, which uh, the President of the United States has the ability, the authority, the legal authority to do. Uh, and we are going to continue to work to get more people vaccinated uh, to get out of this uh, pandemic. The President will use every lever at his disposal to do that. Okay. That one was actually kind of tricky. Yeah. Um, because when I first listened to it, I thought, oh, well, she's lying again. Yeah. But actually, she tells the truth there, but she she obfuscates it in such a way that it seems like she's talking about something else. Yeah. Um, because it is, in fact, the job of the executive branch to enforce the laws of the United States. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that, that part's true. But as far as that executive orders are concerned... Executive people, orders aren't laws. Executive orders aren't laws. <laughs> executive orders are actually supposed to be to the executive branch. Yeah. Um, so, uh, like I said, I went back and I looked to make sure that there wasn't an executive order. Uh, there is an executive order. There's two executive orders, actually, yeah. um, requiring uh, vaccines of ex- uh, executive branch employees. He does have the power to do that, and that's exactly what executive orders are supposed to do. They're supposed yeah. to give direction to the the employees of the executive branch. Yeah, they don't apply to the whole nation, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and but <coughs> she keeps talking about this in such a way that it gives the impression uh, that, um, well, she says outright, really, in the first one, that executive orders are federal law. Uh, but yeah. when she mentions it at the end of this clip here, um, she she gives the impression that that's still what she's saying, that the president has the power, the authority to enforce this particular mandate. Yeah. But she doesn't. (laughs) Exactly. Because he doesn't have the power to 
do it in the first place. Yeah, but what she says is not a lie. It is the responsibility of the executive branch to enforce the laws of the United States. Yeah. So it's just kind of a tricky, like, bait and switch kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then I, I left out this, but I, I actually, I kind of want to go back. This, this came out in the middle, talking about being disingenuous. Um, this was in the middle of this response to this question that Saki gave. Um, and uh, it, it's worth listening to now. All right. I would also note that vaccine requirements have been standard in both the Lone Star State, Texas, in case you're not familiar, and the Sunshine State, Florida, in schools for decades, whether polio, measles, mumps, rubella, the chicken pox. There are vaccine requirements that have been implemented for decades in these states. Okay, yeah, so that's pretty disingenuous, too. Those vaccines are not the same. Yeah. <laughs> um, you well, know, it's, it's, it's not the same kind of thing. And I'm, frankly... I'm opposed to those vaccine mandates as well. But yeah. the the main thing is that those vaccines um, are mandated to attend public school in Florida. I'm yeah. pretty sure Yeah. Um, that you can still attend private school in Florida without those vaccines. Yeah. And the most important bit, though, is that there's nobody checking your MMR um, or your Diptet uh, vaccine records for you to enter a restaurant yeah. or a grocery store yeah. or to get on a plane, at least for a domestic flight. Yeah. It's not the same thing. I think it's very disingenuous for her to make that comparison. Yeah, but it, it it's that's one of those arguments that that will will get people on like it it convinces people. Like people yeah. make that connection like, oh, well yeah, you're right because the, the same thing with um the vaccine passports. I had somebody just today make an argument to me. Yeah, well you have to have a driver's license to drive on the road. How is a vaccine passport any different from that? Did you say I'm opposed to driver's licenses too? Well, I, actually I did. <laughs> but but even so, I was like, there's a big difference here between needing a driver's license to drive on a road and needing a, a, a vaccine to enter a restaurant or grocery store. Yeah. I mean, if you don't see the difference between those two, I don't know what to tell you. Like, Yeah. Well, um, Probably something to consider in this, though, too, is that like the measles and the mumps vaccines were developed in the 1960s. Um, the polio vaccine was developed in the 1950s. Yeah. Not I mean, the same thing. Yeah. I mean, these. Yeah. At least at least you can say while we would oppose, obviously, any requirements, mm -hmm. at least those things have been around for a long time. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's you can't make an argument that the hat testing hasn't been done on those because they've mm -hmm. been around for so long. This is not the same thing. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm not super anti-vax. I, I think you should do whatever you think's best. But yeah. at the same time. Like, do understand that this is a very new vaccine. Mm -hmm. Like, this isn't something that's been around for decades. And while it's not an entirely new technology, it's never worked before. Yeah, and it's never <laughs> been implemented on the scale that oh, it's being implemented. Like, not even, yeah. So, yeah. I mean... I mean, just it's go just in. a huge test bed. And we've we've documented on this podcast that they seem to be intentionally trying to get rid of any control group. Yeah, so. exactly. Uh, yeah. And including us, the people who have chose not to get it. Yeah. You know, I mean, they're trying to by limit, starving us out. By, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. In some cases, yeah. like in New York, that's not far from reality. Yeah. You know, that's true. Well, um, I did want to use this to uh kind of shift gears into the anti-mandate mandate in Texas that Governor Greg Abbott yeah. signed. Um, so I am, while I will always continue to caution uh, answering government action with government action, um, I'm okay with this. I, I'm interested. I was, I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that because I, I didn't know where you, because I, I know principally you should be against this mm -hmm. but because well, of what you just said, because it's more government piling onto more government. Yeah. And for the people that have been listening for a while are probably saying, but Michael, just a month ago, you were opposed to DeSantis, uh, because I was on the other side of mandates, yeah. um, for the school boards. Yep. Yeah. I, we had that conversation on the podcast. Yep. yep. Um, and so let me tell you what the difference is. All right. The difference is the, and the reason that I, well, I don't entirely support the anti-mandate mandates from Abbott. Yeah. Um, I'm not opposed to them either. Yeah. Is the, the uh, more core principle of what we talk about here, and that's self-government. And yeah. I've said over and over and over again that I think that the role of every level of government is to protect you from the level of government above. 
Yeah. And that is the difference here because yeah. Abbott is signing orders to prevent the, is using the state government to protect the citizens of Texas from the federal government. Oh, absolutely. Now, DeSantis was, was overruling a lower level of government. Yeah. Right. He was, uh, he was fighting against the school boards, which are mostly county run. Yeah. yeah. Um, and people have enough power at the county and actually in school boards, particularly it's been shown over the last couple of weeks, you know, yeah. the stuff in the Loudoun County and other places Oh yeah. that the people, the citizens that are there, they have the power to overturn school board decisions. Oh, absolutely. Um, so DeSantis doesn't need to protect the citizens of such and such a county from the school board of such and such a county. Those people can do that themselves. Yeah. That's the difference. That's fair. I, I mean, I, I, I'll grant you that. Mm -hmm. um, um, but a, again, I will say, while I am not opposed to these, there is still danger in it. Yeah. Because what, what you're doing here is that you're um, trying to... Uh, you're trying to overpower one government with another government. Yeah. Um, it doesn't actually solve the problem in any way. Yeah. It, it gives you a, a slight reprieve. Um, but you're at the same time, you're empowering the state government, which can yeah. be dangerous to you in the future. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, and that's, that's the danger. But at the same time, at least, at least it's serving its purpose of protecting you from the next level. Mm -hmm. Um, because in this, this deal is just so huge. Like there's so much writing on kind of how things play out the next couple of months. You know, I mean, these, those type of actions I think are warranted. Yeah. Well, uh, they, they scare me because, well, because you're just relying on government yeah. still. I agree. Um, but something, something has to give, yeah. like we're, we're heading down a very dangerous path here. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, I don't know how all this is going to play out, you know. Um, Secession, I hope. Well, and honestly, <laughs> that's the best answer. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that is the best answer. Like, 50 independent states, you know, mm -hmm. just just do away with the federal government entirely. Yeah. You know. Well, if you could just push the power at the federal level back. Um, now, I, I think that that partly because of, and because of actions like this, um, the state governments have too much power, too. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, if, what you do is that instead of fighting the federal level, you'll start fighting the state level. Yeah. And probably what will end up happening after that is you'll end up fighting the county level because they, at, at yeah. all levels of government, too much power has been accumulated. Yeah. Oh, um, I, I'd agree. But I think it's... I but think, I'd rather be fighting my state government than the federal government. Well, you have a better fight there. Yeah. Uh, because Just because it's less removed from you. Same mm -hmm. way as you have a better chance at the county. You know, it's because one person can make an impact. Like one person, for one person to make an impact on the federal government, I mean, maybe if you're Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, what are you really going to do? But the state government, you can, you can, one person can fight the state government. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you can run for office and, and win, you know. So You're trying to get me to run for office again. Maybe. <laughs> that maybe would. No, I don't know. No, there. I, the party is. Oh, the party to is. Get me yeah. To run for office again. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. Well, it wouldn't be the worst thing. You, not that you have time for that right now, but. Um. Speaking of, uh, there's. Uh, may as well bring this out here, um, because I thought it was an interesting idea, and I hadn't gotten the chance to talk to you about it, and we got some time. Yeah. Um. And there's there's nothing else particularly that I wanted to address yeah. um, tonight. So we may as well mention this. Uh, so they're also pushing uh, you know, our friend to run for secretary of state. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, Matt, they're, they're pushing Matt to run for secretary of state. Yeah. And uh, we had a meeting a couple of weeks ago and um, he was saying, well, I don't even know what a libertarian secretary of state platform <laughs> looks like. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I didn't have an answer at the time, but I was thinking about it later, and I—I I, I was like, um, I bet, I bet Michael could come up with one. <laughs> I, uh, so I called and left him a message, and um, but l let me see what you think of this. Yeah. Um, and any of our listeners, you can always email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike and see what you think of this. Chime so on talk in. A, a libertarian position on the Secretary of State. Now, the Secretary of State is a like pretty much a purely bureaucratic position. It's yeah. Um, but what it does is it uh it handles all these licensing requirements 
Okay. Right? So it handles business licenses. It handles all, all kinds of, of various licensing that goes on through the state for ah. uh, occupations and so forth. Interesting. Yeah. So I said, this is what you do, because I, I can't imagine that all of those individual things are legislated. Yeah. I imagine that the legislation is the Secretary of State will be responsible for setting fees and um, and setting requirements for these for, things. For the licenses. Yeah. 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 I said, so this is what you do as a secretary of state. Yeah. You reduce all the licensing fees to zero. Yeah. <laughs> for everything. Um, and you make the, the licensing requirement, fill out this form on our website and you can print out the license when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be so amazing. <laughs> Dude, and just campaign on it, man. Like just that. Let, tell yeah. It doesn't even matter if you actually have the power to do that. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just saying like, I mean, I'd vote for that. Like, of course I'm a yeah. hardcore libertarian. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, but think of what a boon it could be for the state for suddenly to be for a business license in the state of Alabama to be $0. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think absolutely. they're roughly like 85 or something. It's not a huge, it's not a huge sum. Yeah. Um, but and then you could even start because, of course, the what'll come back and it if he survived <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. after making that kind of thing, because, you know, people at the state level are going to be saying that's going to cost us however many millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. They're um, not going to be happy. But uh, you could make the argument, at least to the people that asked the question. Yeah, um, I, I think I mean, you, you know, probably find somebody to run some numbers yeah. that the you have the potential because you're not getting rid of taxes and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you have the potential to earn more in sales taxes and business uh, like use taxes and what have you. Oh, yeah. Um, from businesses coming into a state with no requirement, essentially, <laughs> to set up a business. Right. Uh, to make up the, the shortfall. Well, and I. And you've gotten rid of a whole bunch of bureaucracy. Yeah. Well, I do think you would have businesses flood into the area if you did mm -hmm. that because um, I hadn't looked into it, but you know, our buddy um, Tim that does the roofing and stuff still hasn't got his license for Alabama because yeah. it's so difficult. Um, I mean, you're talking about just doing away with that. Yeah. And, and that was a big deal after the, after this last storm, mm -hmm. he wanted to get the, and people needed roofs, you yeah. know, and, and he wasn't able to service Alabama because he couldn't get licensed. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that's that that hurt. Not only did it hurt him, um, which but it did, hurt everybody but, that needed a roof, but it hurt everybody that needed a roof. Exactly. Yeah. So, and there were plenty of them after Sally. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, uh. So um, anyway, that interesting, was my idea. interesting thought. Like I, I think that would uh, that would be a fun campaign. Yeah, um, <laughs> what they want me to run for a state auditor. Oh yeah. Uh, which interestingly, my great grandfather was state auditor in Maine. Oh really? Uh, That's interesting. You know, a century ago. <laughs> so, yeah. um, maybe not quite. Close, wild, actually. Wild back yeah, though. It's, yeah. it's close to a century ago now. Yeah. Um, anyway. <clears throat> And uh, I was like, well, what would I do as a state auditor? Because what you do is you like you're you're essentially tracking all the monies, yeah. Like the monies in, monies out, these oh. various departments and agencies and so forth. Yeah. And I thought, well, okay, so what would I do as a libertarian in that position? Well, I'd collect these reports like I'm supposed to, generate these reports like I'm supposed to. Yeah. And I would make them all public. <laughs> like, and I think that they're mostly public now. Yeah. But if you've ever tried to look up any of these, oh, any of mess. this information yeah. in the, from the state, it is really hard to find. Make it easy to find. Yeah. yeah. Easy to search. Like, just make it really available to well, the public and, and because the, the public should know how their money is being spent. Well, and the interesting stuff you could push to the news organizations and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I can put stuff out on Twitter. and. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, you know, yeah. Like, start you a Twitter page and just start letting yeah. it rip, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Did you know great. that we spent... <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Dude, in all seriousness, imagine the following you could get doing that. Yeah. Because people, that, people, that would gain everybody's interest, I think, pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You start really floating some of this information out here. Yeah. So yeah. that could be fun, man. I don't want to run for office again, particularly then. I, I mean, it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent opposed to the idea. Yeah. Um, but like campaigning sucks. Yeah. It, no. Like, and, and it's not so much campaign cause I like talking to the people. I, I mean, yeah. I like getting in front of people and talking. I like going around and shaking hands and talking to people and explaining my positions. Yeah. I mean, I do this podcast. I am, like, <laughs> That's kind of what this podcast is, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I am more than happy to talk. I can, yeah. I can talk. Yeah. Um, but, uh, like all the, just politics is just a dirty just, business. Well, and just getting on the ballot is a fight. 
Yeah. Well, we, we're working on that, though, and we have been for a while, so yeah. that probably won't be an issue. Yeah. Um, but politics is just a dirty business. It is. And uh, I don't know. It's just it's just hard dealing with some of the yeah. personalities. And it's yeah. hard dealing with the state. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, although there there is somebody who said that he would consider at least um like managing the campaign so that yeah. I wouldn't have to do all that bureaucratic <laughs> crap. <laughs> yeah. Well you did it all last time. <clears throat> yeah. I yeah. Mean, and that it was miserable. I, like yeah. that was absolutely the worst part of the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um I liked I, I actually did like canvassing and all all that yeah. stuff. I mean it took me a little bit because I'm not I'm not a naturally really that outgoing. Yeah. Um, or me either. So yeah, you're talking about me going with the clipboard knocking on doors like that's yeah. something that yeah, that's that. I'm not built like that. <laughs> yeah, it was easier to get your kids to do it. Yeah, well, it was easier when you had the kids with you. Yeah, like, people that's were more. Also true. Uh, yeah, <laughs> people are less likely to be mean to you when you got a little kid with you. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. The idea is out there. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. And, um, I said that I would. I would. Uh, once work calms down a little bit, I would meet with the guy and talk more about Consider the campaign. Yeah. And, yeah, without um somebody who likes to put some pressure yeah around just, yeah <laughs> just just kind of get the yeah just talk yeah just talk yeah, yeah. um so I don't know. Oh, interesting i'm glad to see but the, i really like the secretary the... of state oh idea, yeah that, I, I, that's I thought, great yeah, man. i thought that was good that's great um, so well i'm glad to see the parties like making some moves and 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 you know, doing some things. I missed the last meeting. I may have missed the last couple of meetings. I've been yeah. extremely wrapped up to say the least. I so. think, and I should announce this here. If you are in the area, yeah. um, which would be Baldwin County, Alabama. Yes. Um, if you are in the area, we have, uh, the libertarian party for the County, uh, the County affiliate of the libertarian party of Alabama, um, has a big business meeting November 14th. Yes. I think it is which is a Sunday, which I thought was a little odd. But um, <laughs> November 14th at 2.30 in the afternoon, somewhere in Fairhope, I don't remember. Yeah, I think it's at Tamra's? Oh, Tamra's, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's at Tamra's, November 14th in yep. Fairhope, Alabama yeah. at 2.30. I yeah. think was the plan. Going to be a lot of positions available, and yeah, you know, and you can get out there and meet some people. And yeah. we tend to have a pretty good time. Oh, we always we have a together, good time, yeah. absolutely. So, but yeah, meet some people. And, and hey, if you're interested in getting involved and in trying, I mean, I really do think that the party is starting to like. It's been kind of a slow crawl, but we're mm -hmm. starting to make an impact. Yeah. You know? Well, and there, there's just in the last several months, it seems to me that there have been some people that have gotten involved and like not that just are, signed the paper, but are, are serious gotten involved. Yeah. The, and um, that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, there's some serious plans being made and, and people who are serious about doing something. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's what we need. Like, I mean, we need more of those people. So like, if you're listening and could be one of those people, come out because yeah. like I, I think this I think we could really do some some fun things yeah. as a party. And of course, as an added bonus, you would get the opportunity to meet the hosts of the Liberty Mike. Absolutely. We'll both be there. Yeah. So jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our own little meetup. Exactly. Um All right. Well, I guess that's all I got. Is there anything? Is there anything that you wanted to add either as comments on the last podcast that you weren't here for or um, well, just news that you wanted to address in some way or anything? Nothing really offhand. I mean, you talked about the Facebook stuff with, um, cause I, I forget, I'm forgetting now, but. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we still have time. So we, would, I mean, I didn't, I didn't have a whole lot to say, but, um, what was the, I guess the whistleblower was, came out? Yeah, the whistleblower came out and said that Facebook had internal reports. That they knew that they were having a negative impact on particularly teenage girls' self-image, and they didn't care. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have a problem with that. I mean, I've got two teenage girls. Like, I mm. mean, this is this is something that hits pretty close to home to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Neither of them are on Facebook, so that's. But they're on. Well, it was Instagram specifically, I think. I think they're, uh, or at least Callie, it's has been on Instagram. I don't think mm -hmm. it's somewhere she spends a lot of time. But um, 
I, honestly, I, I don't use Instagram, so I don't know a whole lot about how it operates. I, I, Bella's on Instagram too, I know. Um, she probably is. Yeah. Um, but neither of them are on actual Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, but like that, that's it, so whatever well, 2004 or well something. i'll tell you and they'll tell you that like the that that's like the the grandma social media is kind right. of what they call it like it's yeah. not it's not the thing anymore um but you know as as far as a comp i i don't believe we're in actually on instagram we just i have no never activity. touched it yeah. <laughs> yeah um i mean the podcast is on instagram yeah yeah um i you know I have a problem with a company that that would completely disregard, you know, the stuff like bullying and things like that on their on their sites. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I I definitely have a problem with the government stepping in to be the yeah. one to to regulate it. Yeah. Well, it's I, I have a few things to say about it. Um, one is it's it's sure as hell not Facebook's responsibility to manage your children's time on Facebook. Well, and that's another thing um, with... And, and, or Instagram. Um, with Instagram or, or any Twitter of them. Or um, Rissa, any, any of the sites that my kids are on, Rissa is right there with them. Yeah. Like, it's it, it's monitored, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, we know what they're doing on these sites and things like that. And that's kind of the parents' responsibility. Yeah. Like, And unfortunately, we live in a country where a lot of parents just don't take that responsibility seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a problem with the people of the country. Yeah. Like that's not a problem of government. Yeah. Well, it's certainly not a problem that government needs to solve. I mean, the other part of it, and I hate to sound callous about this cause I'm really not, it's not something that I don't care about, but, um, it's, it's just what they're focused on now yeah. is the social media. Yeah. I mean, well, when I was a kid, the social media wasn't available, yeah. and um, it might be a surprise to you, but uh, <laughs> teenage girls had self-image problems then too. Yeah, it, it, it was magazines then, or movies, or whatever. Like, uh, there's always the, something. These it's problems just that evolve. It's something over about time. A, a, about that age. Yeah, and, and you're right. Like that's, but that goes back to the parents' involvement. Yeah, you know? mm. I mean, even back then, it was the same type thing. Like yeah. you know, you you had to kind of monitor what your kids were doing and taking in and that mm. kind of thing. And it's the same now. Um, it's just it's just different, but. But it's different in a lot of ways. Like the the stuff that the kids do now compared to the stuff we did. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, to say the stuff we did as kids, we could never get away with now. Well, that's certainly true um, too. Yeah, but but it was the same they way for my. They were more protected now than they were then. Yeah, absolutely. But it was the same for my parents. Like I remember my dad telling stories about stuff and be like, "We'd mm-hmm. never get away with that." Like mm-hmm. when we were in school, like that was just like that, that's insane that y'all did that, you know. Yeah. And and the stories I have are the same way. Like yeah. my kids listen to that and they're like, "Dude, no way! Like you can't yeah. do that! Like yeah. you don't get away with that anymore," mm-hmm. you know. And so, but you're right; they are. They're more protected now than they have or have been, you mm-hmm. know. But the dangers are different too because the dangers are on social media and places like that. Yeah. Um, but as far as with this whistleblower. I tend to believe that this was all orchestrated by Facebook because Facebook wants the government to get more involved. Mm-hmm. Like they do like this, this helps them in many ways in this mm-hmm. because Facebook has no problem censoring and pulling down material. Like well, they enjoy now. it. Well, that, now there was a time where it was completely open, but yeah, we were but far But it was government removed. pressure that made them do that in the first yeah, place. But I, think I they, don't think that it's really Facebook that wants it. I, I think if, if anything, um, that this is some kind of, but they here's the difference. They've had a taste of the power now. So <clears throat> pre 2016, anything that was on Facebook, you let it rip. It didn't matter. Yeah. The same thing with Twitter. Like it was completely unregulated, mm-hmm. but now these companies have had an opportunity after 2016 to start regulating the material on their sites. And they're realizing there's a lot of power in that. They can control narratives. They can mm-hmm. control Infor- when you, when you control the information, you control it all. Yeah. And in many ways, Twitter and Facebook control the information. Mm-hmm. Um, and to have government step in and tell them to do more would not hurt their feelings. I, I don't know that I agree. Um, I, I think that, I, I think that right now it's a, uh, it's a survival strategy. Yeah. Um, I think for them, the danger of losing however many people, um, because even before all of this, 
the majority of people on social media, like better than half, mm-hmm. um, were more liberal leaning anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I think that the danger of losing the conservative part of their audience uh, or of their customer base, well, their customer base is really advertisers. The, but, the danger of losing conservative users yeah. is far less of a threat to their business than upsetting government. Yeah. Um, and I think that's what the calculation is here. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think that it's Facebook. I, I think that there is some level where Facebook wants legislation because they craft it. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that this was orchestrated by them. I think it's far more likely that that woman is some kind of, um, of government mole. That's possible. Um, and that it's, it's a set up by government in order to give them more control over that information. Yeah. Well, because ultimately the government would be the one that would want to control mm-hmm. the information more, yeah. than, even more than Facebook would. Yeah, exactly. Now, Facebook wants to control information so that they can influence the government. Yeah, yeah. But well, the, and create more profits. Well, sure. But yeah. Um, but your but point. I, I but your think, point's made. I, I don't, though. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that limiting the information available to them actually creates more profits. It does to yeah. some degree, just because of the woke movement. Well, and I'll tell you, because the advertisers are real careful about that kind of thing. But um, I don't. So I, I think that there is a, a level at which they draw more advertisers if they have less um, conservative or questionable or um, rebellious type of content. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that their profits are, are greatly increased by more government control over, no, or, or not. It's, I don't think that their profits are increased expressly by more control from anybody over the information that's available. Yeah. Um, because I think that the, the more information they have available, the more users they can draw in. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe so. And I, the more users they can draw in, the more advertising sales they can they make. Can, they can make. Potentially. Um, it is amazing to me because when Facebook first started the whole like bans and taking posts down and things mm-hmm. like that, I was like, dude, people are going to walk away from this platform. A lot have. Uh, a lot have, but not enough. Yeah. And, and that's, it, it's disappointing to me because like when all of that started, I was like, dude, this will not stand. Like people mm-hmm. are not going to put up with this. And it's kind of amazing to me. Like people have. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll tell you for me, um, anybody that follows me personally has probably know this, but even on the Liberty Mike page, ever since I've been sick and had all this stuff going, barely get on Facebook. Yeah. Like I just, when, when I was sick, I, I couldn't do it. Like I couldn't sit there and look, I don't know what it was, but mm-hmm. it just made me sick to my stomach. And, um, so I get on there. It's not that I don't get on there maybe once or twice a day. Yeah. Like I just, I don't, I don't do it anymore. Like that's, it's just, it's different now. Well, I haven't been on Facebook since last time I posted a podcast. <laughs> that's your, that's, that's your Facebook time. <laughs> that is my Facebook time. I don't really even look at anything. I look at, um, I look at some notifications. Yeah. Like anything that seems significant, all the stuff, uh, since I shared your thing or liked your thing, I, I ignore all that. I yeah. look for comments. Yeah. Um, if people have made comments, I see if it's something that I need to respond to. Yeah. If I don't need to respond to it, then I ignore that too. Yeah. My thing's the memes, and I still enjoy the memes. Like I, mm-hmm. th- that stuff's funny to me. It's just, yeah. By the way, I like jokes. Um, for <laughs> for those of you who uh, want to submit um, information for us to talk about, uh, sending me a meme is not going to do it. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, not has, going to do it. Has you want to send me? Yeah, you want to send me an article or something to discuss? Fine. Sending me a a meme is not news. <laughs> I, I love memes, but yeah, send that to send that to Liberty Larry. Because, Liberty now, Larry may post it to the page, then you'll get I'll, something out of it. I'll at least, post but. it to the page, and hey, if it's funny enough, I might mention it on the podcast. Yeah. I mean, I, because I, I'm a, I would, I'm what you would call a meme enthusiast. <laughs> like, uh, I, I, but just the just the humor of it. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that because that's what I like. I like mm-hmm. ones that make you think, but I also, I just like to laugh, man. <laughs> and oh, um. That actually reminds me. So before we close out here, there is something else that I wanted to mention. All right. Um, and, I, you know, maybe you can just like uh, post it to uh, post the video to the Liberty Mike page anyway, okay. um, just so that it's up there. Uh, we should share it regardless. But maybe two weeks ago now, uh, oh. there was a debate between uh, the great, the inimitable Scott Horton and Bill, Bill Crystal. Crystal. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't had the privilege to watch this yet. I did. It was embarrassing. 
Um, it was great for us. Yeah. Uh, I actually wish that Bill Crystal had put up more of a fight. Yeah. Um, I, I was hoping for a, a good debate and Scott was fantastic as always. Yeah. Um, well, you're not going to out knowledge him on foreign policy. And that was the thing I think that got Bill Crystal more than anything. He was just not prepared for the breadth of knowledge that Scott Horton brings to the table. Yeah. And, um, it was, it is amazing. Cause for people who don't know this guy, he's the architect of everything that happened after 9-11. <laughs> More or less. He was a huge influence. I anyway. mean, you're talking He wasn't actually huge. in government, but he well, was No, on, no, no. He wasn't in government yeah, at all. Yeah, he was on top of PNAC, um, the yeah. Project for a New American Century. Um, he he is like... A good case could be made that he was like the number one neocon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I like... As someone that grew up through that, like, mm-hmm. I mean, that's how I know this guy. That's yeah. what I know this guy as. And it's... Just incredible that Scott got the opportunity to just yeah flambe this guy yeah <laughs> like, yeah it was it was really good um and to me and you guys like if if you watch it and I really hope you do because yeah. it's definitely worth watching it's kind of funny it's a little sad yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it, it's it's definitely kind of funny and and Scott is always incredible and so it's oh, yeah. full of information yeah full of information. Um, but, uh, so Bill Crystal goes first. He has his opening statement and Scott has his opening statement. And I will criticize Scott here because he did one of those things that people do in debates that I hate, which is he ran over time. The moderator told him he was over time and he's like, hang on, hang on. I'm almost done. <laughs> and he talked for another two minutes. Nice. Um, see, I like that. Like that doesn't I, bother me. I like, I, man, I let don't them, like that. My thing's always let them finish their thought, man. Like, I mean, two at, minutes is is what pushing it. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if he had like finished the paragraph or whatever, okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah. But then he would like bring up something new. Like, no, no, you can't. Anyway, okay, I might so, have a problem with that. But, so, but I'm always like, finish the thought. Yeah, you know? that that annoyed me. But other than that, but it was still great. I mean, oh, yeah. like his opening statement was great. Uh, he actually could have stopped talking in the middle of a sentence when the moderator stopped him. It still would have been great. Have, yeah, but, amazing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, then this is where everything turned, I think, yeah. because then um, Bill Crystal got his opportunity to rebut. Yeah. And he stood up for his rebuttal. And I, my impression of this when he got up to the microphone um, after Scott Horton sat down after Scott's opening statement. Yeah. And it, it was like uh, deer in headlights, like wiping the sweat off his brow. <laughs> like I... Don't know how to respond to all of that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it was uh, it was pretty incredible, and he's oh, that's I've got to watch it. Like I hadn't had the opp- just haven't had the time, but yeah. I I have every intention to watch it. Um, this is something else, and I want to address this more um explicitly in another podcast. But there was, you know, spoiler. Uh, there was a question, so they had a Q and A at the end yeah. um, with the the two uh, participants. Yeah, and um, somebody asked Bill Crystal a question like, "What kind of epic failure?" Essentially, I mean, this isn't how he asked the question, but yeah. um, what kind of epic failure would it take for you to admit that one of these interventions was wrong? Yeah, <laughs> was a bad <laughs> idea, and because um, the aftermath of all of them has already been so bad. Yeah, and uh. His response was like he he responded in this very flippant way, like I don't know, a couple of nuclear bombs going off. <laughs> that's yeah, that's that's a that's like, a problem. That's, that's, that's the that's, stick. Like yeah. that's where the stick's at. <laughs> yeah. How how many nuclear bombs would it take? Yeah, like <laughs> is know? one not enough? Like I, I mean. mean like if the first one goes off, it's like oh well. But like when the second one, okay, this was a mistake. Yeah. Like, or maybe the third one. Who knows? Yeah. Like well, one hit here, so that was a mistake. Yeah. Like it hit over there, so that's over there. Yeah. Like I mean, what what are what are we talking about was, here, man? I was <laughs> I was floored. Like my my jaw <laughs> fell open at that. I was, <laughs> like I didn't even know what well, to but, think. Of but but it tell, it it goes to show you how just even somebody is as well connected and as well. As as Bill Crystal, like, mm-hmm. just don't get it. Yeah. Like, th- just like like that's the level of that you're dealing with. You yeah. know. Um, yeah. So watch the debate, though. It's I mean the debate itself is only like maybe forty five minutes, and then there's another half hour, roughly, of Q and A. Yeah. 
and all of it's worth it. And Scott yeah. was fantastic. Oh, I don't like, doubt it. Like I do not doubt it. He like, he's the best. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> we're man. so lucky to have him. Man. Yeah. Like yeah. truly. Well, and that and that's the big thing is that, and I think that this this debate has gotten some traction, like outside of libertarian circles, which is yeah. really good. Um, it's really great that. Well, it should because I like Bill Crystal is a big name. Yeah. Like That's not nobody. That's mm-hmm. not some professor from some university or something yeah. like that. He's the real deal, man. And it was a Soho Forum debate, which I think has a pretty good reputation. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, it it was really great to see our guy so thoroughly make his case. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I wouldn't trust anybody more to make that case than oh, Scott absolutely. Horton either. So Without it question. Was, um, it was really good. Yeah. And so that's... Well, <laughs> I'm excited to watch it. Like, yeah. I, I, I really am. And um, and when you do, yeah, post it to, to the Facebook yeah, page. absolutely. Uh, I would like people to see that because it was... Yeah. I mean, it, there was just... Yeah. You, you got to see it. We'll talk about it more later. We'll All talk right. about it more after you've watched it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's go ahead and close out though. Uh, you know, thank you for listening to us babble on for the last 20 minutes yeah. <laughs> or something. Um, but, uh, we plan to try and get back to a normal schedule, like work slacking off for me. Nice. Um, so um, it's not for me. Well, um, and softball is still going. They extended the season. So, okay. So, so Friday's, Friday's maybe, still uh, probably uh, for a little while at least. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we'll get back to Fridays regularly. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, and, I, know, we'll I, I have best. no reason not to, to be ready for next Friday. So, okay. Um, so, um, you know, we plan to be back in a week. Uh, in the meantime, follow us in the places you can follow us. Um, subscribe in the places you can subscribe. iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, uh, like, and share, um, oh, absolutely. comment, uh, like I said, if it, if you comment and I need to respond, I will. I even, I read them all. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, just tell your friends and watch that, watch that debate. Like that's yeah. homework for everybody. <laughs> um, watch that debate and, uh, and we'll be back uh, next Friday when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.